Hello everyone, Cat Weasel here, welcome to the channel and welcome back to our playthrough of Mage Knight and First Reconnaissance. Just before we start turn one, there was something that I didn't do at the end of the introductory episode and what that was if you recall we did reveal two countryside tiles and while we put the rampaging orcs on there there was also a monastery what happens when you reveal a monastery is you've got to put an advanced action in a sort of special monastery offer and we didn't do that so i'll just do that now so we'll take the top card here and we get heroic tail so this is an influence card white mana card i won't go through it now if we actually pick it up from the monastery then we will have a closer look at it so what i'll do is i'll put this over here and that will be our monastery offer over there so if we reveal any more monasteries we will get some more cards down here that's our unit offer and this will be our advanced action offer and our spell offer will go down there now we don't reveal those yet because it's the first scenario and it tells you not to. So what we'll do is now we fix that, we will get on with turn one proper. Right, oh, so who is going to go first? Well, it's actually going to be the dummy player because he's got mana steel of three. And that is better than our great start of five. Now, these two cards we can just get rid of. So we'll remove those and we will crack on. Right, so Brevelar is going first as our dummy player. So what we do is we just turn over three of these cards. So Swiftness for white, Swiftness another white card and Rage is a red card. We do not have any red crystals, so we do not need to turn any more of those over. Great. That is a good start. Okay, so let's go back to Narawas, who's over here, and let's have a look at his cards. Now, he's got an influence card here, Noble Manners, and he's also got a fight and block with determination, but... That's about it. So he's not got a lot of influence. He's not got a lot of fight and block. The next three cards, Crystallized, Mana Draw and Concentration, well, they allow you to gain mana and to manipulate mana. And our final two cards are actually movement cards. So we're best off for movement cards, really. And considering we're in an exploration scenario, perhaps that's for the best to start off with. So what I think we'll do is we'll go across to the actual map and uh, we'll see if we can do anything. Let's have a look at what our options are. And here we are at the map. Okay, so here's Norawas and as you can see, we've got quite a lot of grassland. Now, the grassland is two to move through. And so, you know, if we can generate a bit of movement, we can actually get to an edge here and we can actually explore. Now, we can't explore this way or this way because the map is going to be a wedge shape and these count as coastline and we can't go any further. We've got to keep in the wedge. So either we can add a tile here or we can add a tile here. That looks the easier place to get to because this is all grassland and we have a village here very important we could pick up some units here especially those Utum guardsmen which will be very useful they've got a lot of fight and a lot of block and that's what we need we do have these rampaging orcs but we're not strong enough to take them on yet so we'll ignore those we could go to these crystal mines if you actually stop on these crystal mines then you will gain a crystal of that color but this one's quite difficult to get to because there's a bit of forest in the way. And to be honest, this one is out of the way. We cannot go any further this way. And if we want to explore, which is the name of the game, we've really got to go up this way. So we've just got this little corridor. Let's get to this village and then let's explore. That seems like our best option. In order to do that, we need two, four, six, eight move. 
Now, I've had a look at my cards and I think we can do that. In fact, I think we can do a little bit better than that, truth be told. So, what we'll do is we'll go back to the player area and see what we can do. And here we are back at the player area. What is Norowas going to do? Well, he's going to move and he's going to move big time. Now, when you take a turn in Mage Knight, you can move and then you can do an action. Or you can just move or you can just take an action. And actions, things like, you know, buying units or partaking in combat, something like that. What you can't do is move, do an action and then move again. Now, you don't have to do anything at all. If you do nothing, then the only thing that you have to do is to actually discard a card. Uh, you can't just do nothing and keep all your cards. You do have to discard one. But we are going to move, so that's fine. So what's he going to do? Remember, we need at least eight movement. We do have two movement cards here, but we are going to have to boost them a bit. And I've got a plan for that. So first of all, we're going to use Mana Draw. Now, Mana Draw's got this symbol on. means you can use it during any phase, so that's great. And... If we were using its base ability, it would be you can use one additional mana die from the source this turn. Remember I told you some cards do allow you to use the mana source more than once. This is one of them. But if we overpower it with white mana, we can take a mana die from the source and set it to any colour except gold. Gain two mana tokens of that colour. Do not re-roll this die when you return it to the source. So that's what we're going to do. So we'll put mana draw there. We're going to take white mana because obviously that's what powers it. And then we're going to take the other white mana die, and we're going to change it to green. Very important. So we'll put that up there. The reason I'm putting the green mana die up there is because that's the one we're not going to re-roll. We will re-roll this one that we used to power the spell. Now, because we took the green one, that means we have to take two green mana tokens or mana essence as I call it. We have to use this this turn or we lose it. So again, I'll just put it on here so I remember. So we've played mana draw. What are we gonna play next? Well, next we're actually gonna play March. Now we're not gonna play it for move two. We're gonna overpower it and play it for move four. And we need green mana. Well, we've got green mana because we got a crystal. So there we go. We got some mana essence and we can play it. Brilliant. So we've got move four. What are we going to do then? We're still at least four short. Well, what I'm going to do is play concentration. Again, it's got another symbol here. We can use it at any time. So that's great. Now, we don't want the base ability, gain a blue, white or red mana token. We want to charge it with green mana again. When you play this, play another action card with it. Get the stronger effect of that card for free. If that effect gives you move, influence, block, or any type of attack, gain that amount plus two. Now, normally you keep this card for combat because it's very strong. But the reason I'm using it is so we can get to that village. If we get to that village, I think we can pick up those Utum Guardsmen and they've got good attack and good block. So I think it's a good use of the card. So we're going to do that. So we'll put that there. We need green mana. Oh, we've got another mana token. Another mana essence was available to us. So we can power that. And this is a really good thing about this game. This is why I'm really liking it already. There's a lot of combinations. So that's brilliant. What's the action card that we're going to play with it? Well, we're going to play Stamina. I don't think I mentioned it on March, but as you can see, this is a move card because of that little symbol in the corner. We're going to play Stamina. Now, we get, to pay, we get to play the Overpower for free. So we do get move four and we get plus two. So we actually get move six by playing this card with Concentration. So that is a total of ten move. Brilliant, eh? So we took Mana Draw. We powered it with White Mana. We took the other white mana die, we changed it to green, which gave us two green crystals. The first green crystal we used to power march for, for four. Then we used the second one on concentration, which allowed us to, pay, to place stamina and 
get move four plus two so that is ten move fantastic what we'll do is we will get back to the map and we'll see how that move translates onto the map and here we are back at the map so Norowas is going to go two four six and he's actually in the village and he's got four movement left so he's going to spend two to explore so let's have a look what we get and oh we get a mage tower and we've got what's that there that's a rampaging art we've got another village and we've got some mountain terrain so where's the number there it is four so we're gonna to have to put it in this sort of general way to set it ah yes it's gonna fit in like that isn't it there we go okay right, oh just move Norowas out of the way this is a good example as you can see we've got a star there and we've got a full circle over there now and that's how you fit them together the stars will go together and the circles will go together then all you have to do is orientate the numbers so they match where the original letter was on the starting tile you see how all the numbers are sort of to this side of the tile so we've got the orientation correct let's put him back on there now we've still got two movement left what we could do is we could move on an extra two there because we do have a planes right in front of him but we're not going to move because i want to stay there because we're in a village and i think next turn we will get enough influence together to actually buy them utum guardsmen so we will actually leave norowas there now because we have actually revealed that tile we will get one fame now we only get this fame during the <laughs> during the actual introductory scenario itself in every other scenario you don't get it so essentially you learn a rule to immediately forget it but we're going to get plus one fame we only get it in the introductory scenario so we're up to one fame already we will uh, we'll move the fame track up in a moment before we get back to the player area though there's a couple of other things we've got to do we have got to pull a rampaging orc and we can actually turn these over and what we got here oh we've got another summoner so exactly the same as the last one he's got four armor he will pull a dungeon monster out to fight us and he has got four fame so let's place him over here he goes there and we've also got to place a mage tower now even though it's during the day because we're not next to the mage tower we can't actually see who is in there if we were right next door to it on an adjoining hex we would be able to but as it stands we can't so we're gonna have to put it face down so there we go those are the only two tokens that we've got to put out i think so what we'll do is we'll go back to the player area and then we've got a couple of things to do and we will do a bit of cleanup and here we are at the fame track so because we explored that tile we move up one there and the other thing we saw on that tile was a mage tower that means we now have to populate the spell offer the spell offer is over here so our first card will be demolish ignore site fortifications this turn enemies get my armor minus one to a minimum of one and that's powered by red mana and the stronger version is disintegrate that needs red mana and black mana Play this only in the attack phase of combat. Destroy target enemy. Oh, that's pretty good. Other enemies get armor minus one to a minimum of one. Cool. Right, so we'll move this down here. That's our first spell. Our second spell is Call to Arms, which is white mana for its basic ability. You may use an ability of one unit in the units offer this turn as if it was one of your recruits. You cannot assign damage to this unit. Very good. It's stronger ability, recruit any one unit from the units offer for free. If you are at your command limit, you must disband one of your units first. Okay, so we've got Call to Arms, Call to Glory. And after that, our final spell for the offer is 
Mana Bolt. And this is a blue mana spell. When you play this, pay a mana. If you paid blue, ice attack 8. If you paid red, cold fire attack 7. Cold fire attack, excellent. If you paid white, ranged ice attack 6. If you paid green, siege attack 5. Siege ice attack 5, sorry. And the stronger version is mana thunderbolt. When you play this, pay a mana. If you paid blue, ice attack 11. If you paid red, cold fire attack 10. If you paid white, ranged ice attack 9, and if you paid green, siege ice attack 8. Woohoo! So, there we go. A few strong spells there. We will pop them into our spell offer. Right, having done that, let's get back to Narawas and let's clean up his player area. And here we are with Narawas. Okay, so we've got a discard and clean up we're not going to do anything else for his turn so the first thing we've got to do is let's put that green mana back remember we are not allowed to re-roll that but we do have to re-roll this one that we actually powered mana draw with so let's do that now Ooh, a gold awesome so we've got a gold mana there that's great move that out of the way these two mana tokens, two mana essence, those are discarded too. Get rid of those, as are these four cards. So these will go into a discard pile. We'll just put them at the side there. All right, so having done that, the final thing to do is to draw back up to our hand limit, which is five. We've still got three of our cards here that we didn't use. So... We'll get another two. We get Rage, which is an attack and block card. And we get Improvisation. So let's have a look at these. Rage, yes. Uh, basic, attack two or block two. If we power it with red mana, we will get attack four. So we need some attack if we're going to start hitting some of these enemies. And Improvisation... Discard another card from your hand to get move 3, influence 3, attack 3 or block 3. And if we charge it with red mana, we get discard another card from your hand to get move 5, influence 5, attack 5 or block 5. Coolness. But we basically use two cards if we use this card. But uh, yes, still pretty good. We'll put it onto there. So we've got our five cards ready. And that is it, I think, for the turn of Noroas. I don't think there is anything else to do. No, that is it. So, next up is turn two. And here we are at turn two. Had a bit of an accident. I'm a bit cramped for room. Anyway, I've knocked me bloody dice tower over and smashed it damn it so i've had to dig out my old one but um i think i've put everything back pretty much in place yeah trips over and nearly took everything with me <laughs> but um i think everything's right okay right back to it okay so here we are turn two and that means we go with the dummy player first so we have to turn over three cards Concentration, Rage, and Promise, which is white. We don't have a white crystal, so that's fine. Now it is Norowas's turn. Well, looking at his cards, we've got Improvisation, Rage, Crystallized, Determination, and Noble Manners. But we are actually in a village. So let's have a quick look at the map. And here we are with Norowas. As you can see, he's actually on a village, and that's pretty cool, because what he's going to do is, he's not going to move this turn. What he's actually going to do is he's going to interact with that village. Now, villages, you can plunder them if you want, but we're a nice guy, so we're not going to do that. You can also buy healing if you want to, want to. but if there is a unit there, and you can you can muster up enough influence, well, you can buy it. And we've got two units there. We've got Peasants and we've got Utum Guardsmen. So what we're going to try and do is snaffle up those Utum Guardsmen. So let's move back to the player area and see if he's got enough influence to do that. 
And here we are back at the player area. Now, there's a couple of ways that I could rustle up five influence. We do have a gold mana, so that helps us out. So we could use that gold mana to overcharge improvisation. Discard another card from your hand to get move five, influence five, which is enough for those guardsmen, attack five or block five. But we use this card and another card. Yep. Yeah. And then what we do is we pick up those Utum Guardsmen. So that's one option. Another option is we actually use Noble Manners. There is a, a gold in the source, so we can use it as white mana, and we can overcharge this. Influence 4, if you use this during an interaction, which is Fame plus 1 and Reputation plus 1 at the end of the round. Uh, turn, sorry. So, cool. We get plus 1 Fame and plus 1 Reputation for using this card. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to use that card. And we'll put Improvisation back. Now that only gives us four influence. Remember, we've got to use the gold mana to power it because it is taking the place of a white. So we'll flick that over. There we go. The gold has become a white to power noble manners. We need an extra influence. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something called play a card sideways. So whatever's written on a card is fine, but you can take a card, and we're going to take Rage, I think. That's the one we're going to use. And we're just going to play it sideways like that, and you can play it for anything. You can play it for move, you can play it for influence, anything like that. So we're going to play that sideways, and that is our five influence. Phenomenal. That means... We pick up the Utum Guardsmen. We've paid our five influence. They're level two. They are five armor in case we want to put any wounds on them. They give us attack two, should we use them, and block four. Counts twice against an attack with swiftness. So awesome. We can pick them up in a village and we can also pick them up at a keep. But we're in a village at the moment and that's where we are buying them from. So we've bought our first unit. We will put them there. Awesome. Right. Are we going to do anything else? No, we're not. We're not going to use crystallize or anything. We'll just keep these as they are. And we have got three cards. So we're going to be drawing an extra two. It's now the end of the round. Because it's the end of the round, that means we can pop the fame up by one because of noble manners. And we will move our reputation up by one. Now, the reputation going up by one keeps us at zero because it's not like one, two, three, four, five. But uh, if we get another reputation advancement, we will actually go to plus one. So that's pretty cool. Right, the other thing we've got to do is we've got to re-roll that mana with my old dice tower, seeing as I smashed my other one like an idiot. And we get a green mana. So we've got two green mana and we have a blue. Put that over there and hopefully not drop it. We can get rid of these two cards and discard them. They can go there. And what else do we need to do? We need to draw up to our hand of five. What we could do is with some move. We need some move because what we need to do, ideally, I'd like to get into that magical glade. That's the plan. Next turn, get into the magical glade. Then we're next to two rampaging enemies. And I think we'll pick the easier of them, which is the, yes, those diggers. And it also means we'll be able to explore as well because we'll be at the edge of the map and we will be within the wedge. So that sounds like a good plan. So let's draw up. We get Rejuvenate, which is a heal. We need a move, really. And our next card is Awesome March. Green. We've got loads of green mana. We're laughing. Fantastic. So we've got Rejuvenate, which is good for healing. Again, this uses green mana as well. So let's read, we've seen March, so we'll read Rejuvenate. Heal one, draw a card, gain a green mana token, or ready a level one or two unit. So we could, we could use this. If we use our Utum Guardsman against those diggers, we can actually um, 
ready them again. So use them and then use them again. So that's awesome. Normally you, you only use them once per round because you exhaust them when you use them. But uh, this is a way of getting them back in the battle. That's great. Um, if we power it up, we can heal two, draw two cards, gain a green mana crystal. So we could be able to keep that in our inventory and ready the level one, two or three units. So ooh, not bad. With this sort of card in our deck, it, uh, it may well behove us to get quite a few units when we can. So once we start levelling up and getting some command tokens, we will do that. Nice card. And March, we've already seen, that's really going to help us next turn. Right, we'll put that there. We moved the reputation up, we moved the fame up, and I think that is it for turn two. Next up is turn three. And here we are at turn three. I think we'll call it, uh, I think we'll call it a night after this and uh, we will wrap the episode. Okay, so first of all, we've got our dummy player. So one, two and a blue damn it so that's one two so he started moving on so we had to do an extra two because of the two crystals they still got a few cards left we should be okay i think all right what is norowas gonna do this turn well let's pop across to the map and have a look at his options and here we are with Norowas. So he's in the village and we've got some movement. So I think what we'll do with him is we'll actually move him into this magical glade here. If we finish our movement there, we will gain a gold crystal because it's daytime. Additionally, if we can generate enough movement, we will be able to explore up here. And that will give us another fame point, which will level us up. Woohoo! Fantastic. Okay, right. So... That's the plan. We'll just move into the Magic Glade. We'll explore. And then, hopefully, we'll be ready to attack these rampaging orcs here, these diggers, next turn. Okay, let's get back to the player area. And here we are at the player area. Okay, right. Let's just move these up here. Give us a bit more room. Move that there. Right, okay, so we've got these, well, we've definitely got to play March. And we've got Green Mana, so that'll give us move four. But we needed to get into a forest. That magical glade is in a forest. That is three, and in order to explore, we need another two, which is five in total, and we've only got four there. We've got no other move cards, but what we can do... I mean, we do have improvisation here, but we don't have any red mana. But we could get three move off that. But if we get three move off this, we've got to discard another card. So, mm, not so keen. I'd, ra I'd, I'd like to use that. We may need it against the actual rampaging orc. So, what to get rid of? Well, we're getting close to the end of the night. So do we need end of the night, end of the day? And we will be going into night, I think. How many cards have we got left? One, two, three, four. We've got five cards left. We're going to get rid of another couple now. Can, we could probably get rid of rejuvenation and play it sideways, to be honest. So if we play this sideways... Then we keep all these and we've got quite a bit of attack and block and what have you. We've got the attack and block off the Utum Guardsman. And like I say, probably don't need to use Rejuvenate straight away with these Utum Guardsmen. And hopefully we won't take any wounds. So yes, we'll do that for five movement. And then we can explore three to the magical glade in the forest and then two to explore. So let's get back to the map. And here we are back at the map. So 
Norowas moves into the magical glade and he will explore. So let's see what we get. Ooh. So let's find where the number is. It is tile number eight. And ooh, this has got some bad terrain. This is swamp. So that's difficult to get through. What's swamp to get through? Five. Oof. Got a rampaging orc again. Oh, look, we've got an ancient ruin. We've got quite a lot of forest, a magical glade. We've got one piece of grassland, and but mostly it's swamp. Oof. But at least we get a fame for actually exploring. And we've got another village. So let's place this. Eight. So it'll be like that. And this should fit something like that. There we go. So the village is right next to us. Okay, we've got to put a couple of tokens out, a rampaging orc and an ancient ruin. Okay, so there's the, oh, what's the rampaging orc? Something different, hopefully. Oh, it's diggers again. Well, there we go. So I did shuffle them. <laughs> I did shuffle them. There are more rampaging orcs than diggers and summoners, I assure you. And we also get a ancient ruin. I'm just going to check. I think, I think we can turn that over. I'll just check. Yes, it's during the day, so it is actually face up. So let's have a look at it. And here we have. Oh, look, if you spend all this mana, you get 10 fame. So you see what I said, you make a sacrifice. So if you uh, sacrifice that mana, then uh, you can get 10 fame. So awesome. Coolness. But I don't think we'll be doing that, but uh, there it is. It goes in there. Yes, all that is a bit difficult to get to. So we may have to leave that rampaging orc, the village and what have you. It's, uh, it's pretty tough terrain. We'll see how we go. Perhaps we'll defeat these orcs and then uh, we'll head somewhere else. We're going to have to watch ourselves because the other rampaging orc, if you move adjacent, so say we're adjacent to that orc next to the mage tower, if we move here, we're still adjacent and that provokes an attack. Yeah, we're all right if we step away, like back into the village, that's fine. But otherwise we will provoke an attack if we move adjacent to them and continue to move adjacent to them. So that's something to look out for. Okay, so we've placed that tile. We're gonna get one fame and let's get back to the player area. And here we are back at the player area. Okay, so that's going to be it. So we need to finish our turn and clean up. So because we've finished our turn, we need to reroll this. So let's quickly do that. See what we get. And we get another blue. So we've got a couple of blues and a green. Awesome. We can get rid of these two. Now we don't draw up our hand just yet. We've got some things to do. So first of all, what we've got to do is we gained a fame for exploring that tile. That takes us onto three, and that means that we leveled up. If you have a look at the iconography down here, we've got a little orange symbol here, which is the back of the cards, and specifically these cards, because these are the advanced actions. We will get an advanced action, and there is a smaller token there, and that is our actual skill tokens. So we have got to level up. Right, first thing we look at is our skill tokens. So we pick the top two, so one, two and let's have a look at them okay so those are the two tokens we've got to pick from i'll put those there we will need our helpful which side are they on oh they're on this side yeah so the first one this one is called bright negotiation once a turn you will have influence three during the day 
or influence two at night that's good it's once a turn not once around so that's pretty cool and this one is just above it this is inspiration once around so this is only once around so either day or night except in combat you can flip this to ready or heal a unit so hmm that could be useful but negotiation gives us extra influence we'll have a think about that i think inspiration you can tell i don't know there's probably loads of people like george who are watching this going no take that one you idiot but <laughs> <laughs> it's all part of the learning curve isn't it so i think which one we'll pick is i will pick the inspiration one so what i'll do is i'll put that here just under where the shields are now we can't use this again this is it this is gone because this is solo we may as well turn it that way if we were playing with other players we'd keep it face up because they'd have an opportunity to possibly pick that skill but once i've discarded it as a, as the player i can't pick up my own skill again that's it that has gone that has totally gone and what we've got to do is we've also got to pick a skill from our dummy player so here we go and what have we got here i haven't a clue because i barely played the game so let's have a look what is it oh it's the top one is it yes the top one cool Elemental Resistance. Once a turn, ignore either the next two points of damage assigned to your hero from a single fire or ice attack, or one point of damage from another type of attack. Hmm. Okay, so we'll put that in the common skill offer. I'll put the common skill offer along here, just under the lip there. So we'll put those in there, and then we know those are the common skills. And uh, we could pick that up next go. But I don't quite fancy it. Okay, so we'll put those back here. Okay, so we've picked the skill that we're going to have. And we've picked Bright Negotiation, is it? Yep. And then what we look to do is we look to pick an Advanced Action. Now, normally the Advanced Action offer would be put out at the start of the game. But very much like the Spell offer we've uh, got to do it when we come to it in the walkthrough so we'll do it now so our first advanced action is song of wind so it's a movement advanced action move two the move cost of plains deserts and wastelands is reduced by one to a minimum of zero this turn that's all right and it takes white mana move two the cost of plains, deserts and wastelands is reduced by two to a minimum of zero. You may pay a blue mana to be able to travel through lakes for move cost zero this turn. Excellent. So I like the look of that one already. Our second one is... Ooh, blood ritual. Look at this. Take a wound, gain a red crystal to your inventory and a mana token of any colour, including non-basic, so you can get gold and black mana off this. This is a good card as well. So you can charge it with red. Take a wound, gain three mana tokens of any colours, including non-basic. You may pay one mana of a basic colour to gain a crystal of that colour to your inventory. That is a good card as well. Put that here. And our final one for the offer is refreshing walk so this is a move and a heal move two and heal one if played during combat move two only okay and if we charge it with green mana move four and heal two if played during combat move four only so okay put that up there but a fancy blood ritual or song of wind i must admit so what we've got to do now is we've got to make a decision I like the move of Song of Wind. What we'll try and do, we'll try and get Blood Ritual a little later on. So we'll have a go at that. But um, yes, I think what we'll do is we'll try for Song of Wind. We are in an exploration scenario, so I think we could do with the movement. Blood Ritual's fine, you know, if we go around killing everything. But yes, 
we need a lot of movement we need to get round all these tiles and discover the core tiles and that city so we'll take song of wind so what we do is we take this and we put it on top of our d deck this is why we didn't pull any cards because we're obviously going to pull that card first and that's going to go in there then what we do is we actually refresh this offer we move it down and this is why you have to do it in order and then we get another one just to put at the back there and we've got pathfinding which is another move card move two the move cost of all terrain is reduced by one to a minimum of two this turn okay if you charge it with green mana move four the move cost of all terrains is reduced to two this turn so if you charge it everything just costs two movement that's a pretty good card as well okay we'll put that up there but i must say i do like blood ritual hopefully we'll be able to pick that up before the end of the round the end of the day right oh so we've done that and what we need to do now is we need to draw up to our hand limit i think i don't think there's anything else i hope i haven't forgotten anything else so we need two cards we know what the first one is it's song of wind so that's good that will give us some movement put that here and next is swiftness more movement so we're doing pretty well for movement uh, move two we need white mana we haven't got any white mana and we could have ranged attack three hmm okay so that'd be really useful as well that range attack three i'm just looking across at the map and those uh, arcs were next to the fortified but if you can attack them for three rain oh no if the fortified we can't use range forget that rubbish the fortified but um, it might be quite good on that one next to the mage tower no we haven't got enough we haven't got any mage we haven't got any ranged attack from anywhere else unfortunately oh never mind we'll have a think about that this is the end of our turn so uh, we'll just put that in our hand okay right so that is the end of turn three and i think we will call it here and uh, we'll say that's the end of the episode it's probably about 40 minutes 50 minutes long so we'll leave it there i've been doing a lot of wittering as normal so yes i think it went okay one of the things about this game he says continuing to witter is there are a lot of combos as i said and because i yeah, i'm new to the game i perhaps don't know the combos and um yeah, when I was picking the skills, uh, I did mention it. There's probably a lot of people who've played this game a lot who are going, no, what are you doing, man? You're doing it all wrong. You know, from a tactical point of view, a strategy point of view, I may have made, you know, I wouldn't call them errors. It's just like, you know, I, I just haven't played optimally. And uh, that'll come with practice. So don't be too, you know, don't be, you know... <laughs> Don't be giving me an hard time in the comments if um, I didn't play optimally. It's just one of those things. As I get to uh, play the game a bit more, then obviously I will get a bit better at it. And uh, I'd rather, you know, make my own strategic mistakes and learn from them, if you know what I mean. So don't be too harsh. It is my first game. So uh, there's probably, I mean... Um, I was actually videoing this and some, and uh, I got a, I got a piece of advice from George, and actually his piece of advice was much better than what I did. But I was already half through halfway through filming, so it is uh, so sorry about that, George. It wasn't it wasn't that I wasn't taking any notice of you. It was I'd already filmed it, and uh, yes, your idea was probably better. I did get bits of it bits of it i did get so i was quite chuffed that um a couple of the cards i played and, and what i did matched what you were going to do it didn't match it exactly um but uh not too bad i don't think not too bad but uh, as i say as i play it more i'll obviously get more used to the tactical side of it and the strategy side of it so don't be too harsh if i've played something you've gone no why did you pick that skill and why did you pick bloody song of what is it? Song of Wind. Why do you pick Song of Wind when you could have had Blood Ritual or whatever? 
um, it's just the way the cookie crumbles. So, uh, as I say, a bit more experience and hopefully I'll get a bit better at the game. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed these three turns. I have. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I had a great time. Apart from smashing my bloody dice tower, I've just ordered another one. Uh, hopefully it will come soon. I do like those dice towers. But, uh, yes, unfortunately, dropped it and smashed it. Damn it! But these things are sent to try us, aren't they? Anyway, what else? Oh, yes, another thing. Um, I'm actually videoing this on my phone because something else broke. My video broke, so I'm having right laughs. So these things come in three, threes. I'll probably break my neck or something. But, um, yes, um, I'm quite chuffed with, actually, how it's uh, turning out on the phone. So I'll, I think I'll stick with the phone. It, um, it does seem a lot better than that old Antwacky camera that I was using. So we'll carry on with the phone and see how we get on. Oh, and of course, if I make any errors or whatever, please, you know, let me know and I will try and fix them for next turn. There's a high probability I may make some errors. As I say, it's my first game. So if you do spot any, please let me know. Right, so I think that's about it. So I may as well go into my final spiel. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for all the subscriptions. Thanks for all the likes. Thanks for all the dislikes. The introduction's already got a dislike. I knew you'd be back. So thanks very much for that, whoever you are. At least you watched it. And yes, anybody who's been across to Board Game Links to watch the videos there, thank you very much. And I haven't put these up on BGG yet. I may put them up in a while. But uh, if I do put them up in a while and you like them and comment on them, thank you very much. But... Um, Right, other than that, that is the end of episode one of Mage Knight and First Reconnaissance. I hope you join me for episode two. But until then, this is me, Cat Weasel, signing off. Toodaloo!